about Sabbath as it's been handed down to us, I think there has been a, a set kind of time, depending on what tradition you're in, it's Saturday. Uh, for, for Jews, it, it starts, what, 18 minutes before or after sundown, I can't remember which, on Friday night, and ends. it's about a 25-hour block of time. Um, and, and over time, I think the literature around Sabbath has evolved to say, you know, we really need to uh, be expansive with how we think about Sabbath. Sabbath happens when it needs to happen. And so for our family, I'm a pastor, uh, so I work Sunday morning. Um, we actually take Sabbath on Saturday, most of the time. Um, and so, um, and what that is, is a time uh, not to work, um, to, to set aside the, the growing pile of laundry or the emails that are asking to be answered and to uh, find those things um, that are work for us and, and setting those aside. Um, so that includes paid work, that includes household chores, uh, technology. For me, the priority is to do it regularly. Uh, weekly is, is kind of uh, a really good thing to strive for. I think it's better to do something weekly for a shorter amount of time than do something for a longer amount of time less often. Um, I think there's something about the weekly pattern of our lives that I think is, is really uh, important and helps reinforce. Well, the first and uh, foremost thing is that it's commanded. Um, it is the fourth commandment, um, and uh, for some weird reason I have found, and even in my own life, that that's not enough uh, just to say it's commanded. Uh, go figure. We need other kind of things that compel us to it, but thankfully with something like Sabbath, it really is a practice that is life-giving. I have found it to be the case. Uh, with my family, I have three little kids, nine, six, and four, and this is a pattern that we have sought to follow in our lives for, for several years now. Um, but one of the wonderful things about Sabbath is that um, it really allows us to live out our faith. Um, you know, Christian uh, practice has become so much more prominent in the conversation uh, recently, not just what we believe, but what we do to live out our faith. And, and Sabbath is a way to live out that faith, just as we worship or we pray, uh, we practice hospitality. Um, Sabbath is a, is a lived experience, and so in that sense, it can be uh, very, very transformative uh, for us. Um, there is a, a tremendous spiritual uh, benefit to it, uh, this idea that for, for one day a week or for a certain time each week or each day, however you want to configure that, um, the world does not depend on us. Uh, we, we understand ourselves to be uh, dispensable, in a sense, that we can trust God that God is, is holding all things and that we can rest and play and uh, delight in this world that God has made and in our relationships with one another. So there is a tremendous spiritual benefit to, to following this uh, pattern in one's life. Um, and Chris, I don't know whether you've read some of the, it seems like there's new articles coming out all the time about the impact on creativity when we take time to rest, when we don't uh, work all of the time, when we get ourselves in that kind of busyness, it can actually negatively impact our uh, productivity, if you will, our, our own creative process. And so, um, you know, our life is a creative act. And so to take time, uh, fallow time, where we're not producing something, uh, working on something, uh, can have tremendous uh, creative benefit for us. The work week really never ends for us. And it never really begins for us either. It's just a constant state of emails and, and blogs and all of those things. And so uh, Sabbath is a way to, to say, no, the work week is ended now. And then to take that time and then to let it begin again. So uh, it's, it's uh, tremendously beneficial in terms of a pattern. You know, uh, you may be familiar with the godly play method of, of, of teaching stories to children. And, and I think it's telling that they call the Ten Commandments the ten best ways to live. And so that's really the way I think about Sabbath. Um, you know, the commandment aspect is there, but it really is, it's an invitation to me as much as anything else. And so it's an invitation for me and for uh, my children uh, in terms of, uh, you know, there, there's so much uh, opportunity out there for children to be involved in activities, sports, lessons, and um, it is so easy to get overextended in that. 
So Sabbath uh, is, is a way to take a step back and say those things are important and they're great opportunities for our children, um, but we also need to teach them uh, to rest, to play, to, to be unstructured with their time. And so Sabbath is a part of that too. Mm -hmm. Jesus observed the Sabbath, and he also did things on the Sabbath that uh, gave the religious authorities pause. And, uh, of course, there's that wonderful line where he says that Sabbath was created for humanity and not humanity for the Sabbath. And so one of the principles that I bring to Sabbath keeping is that um, anything you feel like you should do as a Sabbath activity, you need to really look at that and then think about letting that go. I think, I think Sabbath is a day for, for no longer shoulding on ourselves in terms of the things we feel like we ought to be doing.